Thank you for tuning in to the Helium Radio Network. You are listening to a rebroadcast of a previously recorded show. And welcome to the Feel Better, Move Better, Be Better podcast. My name's Roma, and I will be your host today. I am joined by Lena Roberts. Hi, guys. Good morning. Hello. hello. And our special guest today, Catherine White. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Catherine. How are you? I'm well. Yay. I'm glad to be here. That's all. Yeah, I feel good. Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm slow. Oh, no. Because I took that self-care of comforting way too literally this weekend and i ate a lot of bad stuff that i have not been eating Uh for like two months and i just feel so sluggish today and i know it's because it was sugar overload this weekend it it was so good though oh my gosh i know i'm gonna be in withdrawal for the next three days i'll be in withdrawal so if you see me like just twitching over the corner (laughs) yeah you'll you'll know what's going on (laughs) so what did you guys do for i know it was this past weekend was the easter holiday and i know that uh, i really took advantage of the resting and eating part what did you guys do i well we did a the fire event so we didn't get to bed till like six in the morning so we woke up around 2 30 in the afternoon and i prayed the um my new tradition easter mac and cheese where it's my breakfast lunch and dinner where i just eat a giant pot of mac and cheese <laughs> very terrible but it was very spiritual <laughs> self-care gotcha <laughs> what was your eating i'm this trying weekend? not to judge you guys <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, mine was family and friends, obviously, and um, and great food. I, you know, I love to cook. So I, I my mother requ- uh, requested a Portuguese meal. She's a port a Portuguese, and um, so I did some baking and um, did some some sugar cookies and some really good cupcakes, mm. and then uh, I actually did some food with that dessert. So it wasn't just all dessert and all chocolate. Mm. I, I. Pretty much um, bombarded our house with chocolate, too. There's nothing wrong with that. No. I I didn't eat any of the good food. I ate all junk food. Like, mm -mm. I usually can see that on your face when you do that. Oh, I know. I have been. I've been drinking a lot of water. Good girl. Because I've been trying to flush it out. But, you know, when I say I ate ate really bad, I really did not eat that bad unless you count the, the, like, eight. Donuts (gasps) Donuts <gasps> that I ate. Donuts are so good. <laughs> Between Saturday and Sunday, I ate eight, eight, eight donuts. Don't but I, I, wonder, eat- I wonder how many people out there can um, can feel you, as far as like they they did very similar. Yeah, I, I, and I think that Easter is the day to do that. Sugar, sugar, the sugar, sugar or the peeps. But I didn't have not one peep this whole season. I didn't eat. I get, got. Um, given to me two packs of them, I gave them away. Um, so I, I'm pretty proud that I didn't need a peep a whole, whole I'm holiday. Sure. Those, those peeps are so good, though. <laughs> I don't think I've had a peep in 30 years. Oh, they're so good. I kind of have a thing about nutrition. I respect, I respect yes. it. So, Catherine, tell us a little bit about you. What brought you into massage therapy? Or well, what t- 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 would you start first, over? I, I'm going to say my first uh, part of my life as an adult was in the culinary world. So I was a chef. Um, I had several different types of restaurants. And um, about uh, mid-30s, I switched course after I got kind of um, 
done with that part of my life. It's an interesting uh, world in the in the restaurant business. You know, your daughter's in that business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, I loved I loved food. I love I still do, and I love preparing food. I love experimenting. I'm. It's one of my favorite uh, interests outside of my working world because um, about midway I, I went ahead and went to school for massage therapy in my mid-30s and um, I've been doing it ever since and I am madly in love with what I do. You know, not a whole lot of people get to say that about what they do for a living and I the more the longer I've done this the more I love it which is kind of the opposite of a lot of other people's careers they kind of come to a place where they're like I need to do something else and I cannot see myself um, ever stopping this work because there's <clears throat> there's so many options in as a massage therapist it's not like you're sitting in a cubicle looking at a screen and you know your only options are if you want to do your stand-up desk today or not you know you, you have so many options and, and by the way that brings me into the segment of Catherine now has an electric table that she could bring up and Yay. down. Yay. Yay. So bougie. Yes, it is. Yes. So now you can do that. Mm -hmm. But you, you have been a massage therapist for how long? A little over 20 years now. I'm, I was trying to, I'm thinking about 20. I started with my education. I think it was like 24 years ago. So, um, yep. I've been doing it a while and you know, there's something I, I, I think about when when in this industry because I remember at the beginning you know when you're first starting probably like any industry where you're working for yourself and you have to you know try and you're building an income and you know you're building mm -hmm. your business and you know I, I would say at the beginning there were times when I wondered if this uh, was going to be able to be doable you know mm -hmm. um, and like I said I think anybody starting an industry um, or a business uh, goes through that but if you just keep pushing forward and make sure that it's from your heart and not about the money, right. um, it, it turns into um, just the love, the absolute love of working with people. And, um, you know, I love also being able to help people with more than just the physical aspect of their life. I like to help people with their nutritional uh, thinking. I like to help people um, with their uh, overall spiritual thinking. You know, I obviously don't don't bring religion into my massages because that's a no-no. But um, just living a spiritual life, which is, I, I equate that to being, um, you know, living a life that takes care of yourself, living a life that cares and loves yourself. And, right. And so we get some pretty good conversations going, most of my clients, you know, about how we go about that. And I love the um, uh, the exchange of the different ages of clients. You know, when somebody's oh, yes. much younger and they're starting to find that out about themselves, and then you have people who have been working that journey for a pretty long time, and you know their their inner peace shows, and uh, especially people who get massaged kind of on a regular basis, mm -hmm. basis, and they've been doing it for a long time. I, I understand exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. There's such a cool um, thing that you get to watch and evolve in your clients. So, yeah. Um, I used to massage people with food, and now I massage them. Although there was a time when I lived up north. You massage people with food? I Well, on the inside. I'd sign up for that. Inside of their food. The food oh, massages oh, them from oh, the inside. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> You make them food, they eat it, and it makes them very happy. I thought, very what did you peace. do with... No. <laughs> okay, that's a whole other weird way of thinking about things. I know, I know. That's right. I was going, wait, wait, wait. Let me, when, let me wait, clarify this. Theoretically, theoretically, we already are because coconut oil. I'm True. Kidding. Well, there you go. And you can use it both ways or all of us. No, actually, when I lived up north, I had um, a, a huge vegetable garden. And um, my clients, my office was in my home because up there, everybody's office is in Pennsylvania. Everybody's office is in their home. I mean, your doctor office is in their home. Your dentist office is in the home. It's really uh, different. And um, 
I would always have little care packages for my clients when they were done of soups and fresh vegetables and things that I would I would prepare for them. So they got to actually take home their dinner for the night. So they were massaged and they didn't have to go home and cook. That's, That's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that is pretty cool. That was fun. So tell me about what you did. You went to school in... Pennsylvania, or do you go to no, school No, I went to school here? in Nashville first. Nashville? Nashville, Ooh. Tennessee. Yeah, that's where I was living. I so love that little town. How long it isn't there? a little town anymore. It's more like Atlanta now. Yeah. It's a big it city. Huge. It's everybody piled there. and um, Everyone wants to be in Nashville. Yeah. yeah. If you're, How long if were you're, you there? I was there for six years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, that's actually where I made my transition from the restaurant industry. Um, I, I moved out of that industry and into massage there. And so I went to a school there called the Natural Healing Institute. It was a school as well as a clinic. And um, it was owned by uh, the uh, several people on the Vanderbilt Hospital Board, Medical Board. And, you know, they believed in holistic care as part of the care of their of their patients but yeah. you know the industry i mean the insurance companies wouldn't um let them really practice that in the hospital obviously so they they had a clinic close by so they kind of utilized okay the western medicine and the eastern medicine together so that's where i originally went to school and then i came back to florida which is my home state born and raised here in st petersburg actually i was born and raised Yay. here Yep, not a whole lot of us here. And I know, I always thought it was a myth until I met you. Wait, Wait I was born and raised here. You yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yay. St. Pete General Hospital representing. Wow, I was at um, Bayfront, which was called Mound Park back then. Oh, God, I just gave away my freaking age. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, yeah, so I went back to school here, and I went to an Eastern modality-based uh, school called Bhakti. All you Bhakti students out there, I know there's many of you. Raise. Hello. <laughs> I, you are the only person I have ever met from Bhakti. I meet people quite often, actually. When people, when I meet people who are massage therapists here, and I say, well, I went to Bhakti, and they're like, I did too. Well, that's awesome. I actually, I, I yeah. have it was a small that. school. It wasn't like Corteva. Yeah. Corteva is a big school. Yeah, Corteva is, is so big now. Yeah. Well, they're all over the country. Yes. Okay. So. So, we're going to take a break now. And when we come back, we're going to talk to Catherine more about what actually she does during a massage. See you in a few minutes. Hey, Eric Rimmel here, producer of the Feel Better, Move Better, Be Better podcast. And I'm here today to tell you about the amazing folks at Peaceful Warriors Wellness Center. Not only am I a producer of the show, but I'm also a client. Their staff of therapists are truly the best at what they do. Now is your chance to check them out for yourself. Go to their website, PeacefulWarriorsWellness.com and click book now or give them a call at 727-822-8866. Use the promo code radio and get $15 off your first visit. Yes, you heard me right. $15 off your first visit. Now, this is just for a limited time, and make sure to tell them that you heard about it on heliumradio.com. Welcome back to the Feel Better, Move Better, Be Better podcast. I am Roma, and I'm here with Lena and Catherine, and we're going to go into uh, Catherine's experiences as a massage therapist, correct? Mm Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay, so we're talking about when somebody would come into my massage room and um, what they might uh, think they would to experience. Hello, what am I trying to say? Like the the whole shebang, the experience. Well, let, let's do this. I know this would be an easier way to do this. Catherine, tell me about your most favorite client. Uh, well, he's tall. Oh, what? no, no. I'm just <laughs> um, no, <so. laughs> now, I'd like to know 
what kind of client that you like to work with? Okay. Um, I know exactly the answer to that. Okay. There are many kinds. Okay. Okay. And I say that because I love a good challenge. Um, I love a good challenge with, with people who uh, have, you know, different things going on in their body they don't even realize they have. And um, I love to feel with my hands those things in the, in the tissue, in the soft tissue, and then the ability to work that and to change that. And I know by my hands that it's completely changed, like the, the, the tissue has gone from maybe a little stringy feeling or a pocky feeling to a very smooth and lengthened feeling. Yes. And I know exactly how that's going to change them when they, when they stand up and they leave. They're yes. going to actually not even realize that they could feel so differently. And, um, and, I, and I love to, uh, to get to know people and what it is that actually uh, is affecting their tissue. And a lot of times it has to do with um, their diet or, or their, what's going on emotionally in their life. And so it's a process. It's a thing that we, that we share together. I like to find the common interest. Um, I like to be able to have people share what they're experiencing and going through if they want to in a safe environment. And, um, and you know, we, it's amazing how many common things you have with the people that come in to see you. Absolutely. You know, the things that you've, you've maybe experienced or you know other people have experienced and it, it gives people a feeling of belonging connection you know? and another connection that you have with yeah them. because i think you know we do tend to feel like we um as you know we, we've been isolated for such a long time here with this coronavirus and All i right. think that isolation feeling has grown in everybody's um being and when you start to make a connection with somebody and we start to talk positively about what beauty is in life and what beauty is in people, you know, and the people around us and share uh, that, that same thought process. And right. you know, when you get off the table and you put your clothes on that you're actually feeling like you can go out and the ripples of your good feelings and good experience is going to go out into the world. And oh, your that's a very changes. nice thought. I hadn't thought about it that way. Oh yeah, so that's that's you know that's what I I think that's what uh, that's what excites me about working with people and 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 new people people who have never had a massage that's always amazing an amazing experience but it doesn't matter I like everybody so like tell everybody. me about your techniques I know that you are like all the therapists here is not one technique it's all what we have learned over our years of touching people and yeah. working with people and taking classes. Yeah. All that brings you into what you do. But talk to me about what you do during a massage. Um, I use my hands and let them do actually the thinking, if you will. If I can let my hands, um, and, and, and I say this because when you've done this a long time, you've touched so many bodies that your hands can actually go and feel and heal from that experience of all the different bodies that you've actually, I mean, everybody's basically made the same, but yet we are all individual. And yes. my hands are the ones that actually go and, you know, they have that muscle memory that goes into the body and says, you know what, I feel something here, but you know what, that's not really where that's coming from. It's coming from somewhere else. And I know that. And I know how to go there and find what's what it is by the the amount of experience that my hands have had. So your hands are going to follow the path of it's like a Ouija board. It's <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Yeah. But, um, you know, so I, you I use your hands. Yeah. Well, um, I do what a full body massage, which I understand is not um, the same as I didn't realize it. But I do believe that the entire body is involved with whatever is happening. 
when somebody comes in and says to me, oh, I really just need this, I'll say to them, I understand we'll, we're going to focus on that and we are not going to let you leave here without change to occurring, but can I just show you that other things are involved? And all I have to do is say that to people and they're like, well, okay. And then I, sh I get there and they understand and I explain to them. You know, I'm not somebody who starts labeling off your muscles to you, but I'm somebody who will say, you know, this is usually coming from something that's going on here. And they'll go, oh, you know what? I hurt that area. Or it could have been a long time ago. It could have been recently. And, the, and I'll go, well, that's, that's part of what's happening here. And I'll show them how the connection works. Um, and I think people enjoy that. I think they like to learn about themselves and how, and Absolutely. then I, 10 out of 10. Yeah. And I'll tell them some of my little, some of my little tricks that I do on myself when I have things going on so that they can help themselves. Yes. You know, at, at home. And when they start to feel a certain feeling coming on, I'll say, you know, do some of this over here and check over here and, and see, let me, you know, you know, and they'll, they'll, they they leave with having some knowledge of themselves, if not more than they already had when they came in. So talk to me about some of the tools that you use during session. Um, I know that you use a bunch because you bring in this whole cart every morning <laughs> when you come in here. It's this whole cart of stuff that you I'm a serpa. In. I carry bags to the top yes. of the hill, to the top yes. of the mountain. I climb the to the bags. top of the mountain with my bags. <laughs> I look, see, and then I um, let them go. Um, no, yeah, so I do. I incorporate um, cupping a lot. I'm a very, very, very big proponent. Yes, thank you, of cupping and using cupping. Um, sometimes I use the um, Medi machine, the cupping Medi machine in there, and yes. sometimes I use my own hand cups, the, you know, the uh, hand talk. Stationary cups. Yeah, manual. Um, and I also like to add reflexology. I like to, I like to teach people about reflexology and the, yeah. and the connection and where, you know, how reflexology helps to massage the organs and, and where I can't quite get that way with my hands manipulating the muscle tissue or soft tissue, but I can, I can do a connection from the feet and the palms and the ears and their face and, that's always a, an interesting thing to teach people, and they love that. And I show them the charts on the wall afterwards and show them, you know, where the connection is. And that's, you know, but um, I do, uh, I am more a person who uses my own hands more than anything. You know, I, I bring things in when my hands aren't able to make the change that I'd like to see happen in that hour or hour and a half that I have somebody on the table. So but you make the decision what tool to use during the massage. Yes. I yes. don't, I don't, you know, if somebody says, I'd like to just do this, I say, well, I think we want to go ahead and see what, what, what is needed. You know, what, right. you know, if I, if I need some assistance, by all means. But to me, the hand, the energy that exchanges between the, the client and myself through my hands are the biggest healing component that can happen in that room. That's awesome. I, I can tell you oh that um, from personal experience that Catherine's reflexology is amazing. I love it. I have to get on your schedule soon, <clears throat> excuse me, because I have not been on there in several months now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I need to make, a, make an appointment real fast. Yeah, it's that time of the year. There's quite a few people booking. Yes, it's, our, our season has been super busy it has. last mm -hmm. week was amazing yay i mean mm -hmm. i think that we had like random appointments open and those were the appointments that people had canceled at last minute mm -hmm. and the rest of the appointments were completely what was in it? the office i remember there was one day i'm pretty sure i told like 20 people sorry we're full but i have slots tomorrow saturday like i kept like i have all these other time slots i just don't yeah. have today they're like this was the only day sorry <laughs> like, right. ah! yeah it's hard <clears throat> to get in here without some sort of a pre-schedule that's why most of my clients now schedule before they leave for their next appointment yes you know um and, you know, and of course, if it doesn't work out down the road, you know, you give a call a day or two in advance and we, we can fill it again. So it's no, it's yeah. not a problem. But 
I do recommend my clients go ahead and get on the schedule before they leave, you know, um, Absolutely. because otherwise, you know, it's hard, it's hard to get in, um, which you, that's a good thing. You and Scott and I have clients that we have had for years mm-hmm. that come in on the same day repeatedly mm-hmm. and and that's what they expect and so if they want to keep that appointment then yes they do have to rebook with us yeah quickly yeah. or it'll be next month if you because it's we are booking out weeks mm-hmm. in advance yeah uh, i heard at one of the networking meetings, I think it was a chamber event, maybe it was Rick Christman that said it at a chamber event, that the amount of people that are moving permanently Mm. to St. Petersburg is equal to the snowbirds that will be leaving here. So that means that we are having a huge influx of people moving here. You know, um, I noticed... Probably at least probably two years ago, I noticed that we don't really. It used to be very seasonal here. Yeah, where we I know people do leave after the the height of the season, but then all these other people come in now, and now it's a year around thing. It's really yeah. not a. You know, it used to be like summers. You were like yawning. You know, like whoa, huh, huh, huh. that's not. It's not the case anymore. I mean, no, we are year around, been. which is. Fantastic. When I lived up north, it was a year-around business. You didn't have seasons, you know, because people were, it's just, you know, it's not It's not a seasonal place. Know, it, was, it was something that I had to get used to. And um, I know that in years past, I really used the summer months that we were slower in the office for networking mm-hmm. and business building. And so now I've had to... I've had to whittle that into everyday life now because I don't have time just to do it in the summers anymore, which is a good thing, really good thing. Yeah, we are, we're becoming a very, a very busy area here. It's changed so much for us who were born and raised here. I mean, I was coming down First Avenue North today and realized that all the construction they're putting in those bus lanes right in the, in the middle of First Avenue. Did you know that? Yeah. With the rate, with the rises, yeah. you know, for the for bus stops for, in the middle of the road, it's no longer a side of the road thing. Yeah, and I'm like, how are they crossing to that stop? I'm not sure. Is it going to be pedestrians? Anyway, it's going to be. It's really going to be changing. It really We're is moving on up, as they say. Moving exactly. On up. What was it? Anyway, I remember. Man, it's like. I wasn't even allowed to be downtown St. Pete when I was in middle school, and now it's like where I am 90% of my time. Mm-hmm. Right. Everything's just changing. I moved here in 2010, and 2011, I went downtown and was like, because everybody had told me, stay away from downtown. Don't go to downtown St. Pete. I definitely don't go to downtown St. Pete after dark. In 2010, it was like that? Well, that that's, that's what everybody was telling me, so I stayed away. So in 2011, I came down here and was like, this place is awesome. And it, now, granted, whenever we moved into this office here, this block and this area was only at 40% occupancy. There was a whole bunch of empty stores, storefronts. Um, and now, it's like 98 percent occupied Mm -hmm. it has so grown in the past 10 years which by the way we signed the new lease guys and so we will be here for at least another two and a half years that's fabulous we we are excited that made us feel very secure getting that second i mean that third lease signed well and we're doing some some inside uh renovating of doing some beautification if you yes will. we are um, um, yeah. we're getting some new massage tables some new carpet mm-hmm. we've got some new furniture um, I, I have I really didn't want to invest much in it because I didn't know if they were going to tear the building down in six months which they're still going to tear the building down in two and a half years but we, we have time yes so we didn't want to 
put too much investment in it when I didn't know a timeline. Mm-hmm. But now that we know a timeline, beautification time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But no matter what, in two and a half years, we'll still be accessible to all of the lovely people that come to see us. Um, we'll keep it. As Absolutely. Close to the and location. we, you know, two and a half years from now, we have a little vague timeline of what we're doing and, you know, where we want to be. And it's, it's kind of vague right now, but we will keep everybody appraised as to where it will be somewhere close around here. We're not going to go, you know, to the beach or somewhere far away. It'll, it'll be somewhere downtown here. Yeah. yeah. But we we're downtown people. Yeah. And, and we will cross, cross that, that bridge when we have to. Exactly. One day. Catherine, it has been awesome talking to you today. It's been great to be here. I love we, it. We look forward to seeing you again. And we know that next time that you come, I really want to delve deep into why you do the full body. So the next time that we talk, that's going to be our topic of conversation. That sounds good. So thank you. Thank you for having me. This is the Feel Better, Move Better, Be Better podcast. Uh, it has been your hosts, Roma, Lena, and Catherine. And Catherine's here on Tuesdays and Fridays, by the yes, way. Yes, Catherine yes. is Catherine's here on Tuesdays and Fridays. Yeah. Uh, you can book with Catherine through our website at peacefulwarriorswellness.com and click book now and it'll take you to Massage Book. Or you can give us a call at 727-822-8866 and I can get you scheduled whenever you'd like. Um, or you can just check us out on social media and see what's going on at PW Wellness on Facebook or Instagram. Um, thank you so much for coming. Please like us on Facebook or Instagram. Yes. Subscribe, Amazing. rate, and love review. Us. Do all that stuff. Like us, love, love us. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Have a beautiful day. Thank you for listening to Helium Radio. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own and should not be construed in any way as advice from Helium Radio. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our website. Personal perspectives expressed by the producers, writers, and editors will always be presented as such. Any rebroadcast or retransmission without the express written consent of Helium Radio is strictly prohibited. Thanks for listening.